the story starts, I mean, it's literally a cliffhanger. Here is our hero cheering Georgia Sherpa. It's the middle of the night. He's hanging off a wall of ice from an ice axe. There are these huge blocks of ice that are crashing down and that he's dodging. And he's making his way down the mountain and, and you find out that there's another climber who's attached to him, who's literally hanging off of him. And they have to make it down the, most, the deadliest stretch of the most dangerous mountain after they have not slept or eaten or, you know, they've just been climbing this mountain for days and days. And it ends with them falling and you don't know what happens. And what happened that night, it was just, I mean, that rescue was something that if I'd seen it in a movie, I would have just been like, no, that's not plausible. It, you know, it's proof that with nonfiction, you know, truth is stranger than fiction, that, that you're not constrained by what seems possible. You're only constrained by what happened, and that's often a lot more crazy and interesting. And the way I reported that, I mean, I interviewed Cheering, I interviewed Pasong, I looked at photos of the place, I listened to image, I listened to sounds of the place, I had them show me exactly what happened multiple, multiple times. Um, I went to similar places to, to try to get the same look and feel. Um, I mean, I must have spent a week just doing interviews relating to that one scene because it's just such... It's, it's just, you don't get scenes like that ever. I mean, I just, I couldn't believe it. It was just, it was such compelling material. I get bored really easily reading books. And so if a book does not draw me in quickly, I just am someone who, who wants to put it down. And then also, as a beginning author, you're competing with just, you know, a whole mountain of book proposals and if you don't have a good title and a good first sentence and a good couple pages you just don't have a chance really and so i wanted something that really grabbed someone that just you know where you said oh my god what happens i've got to find out what happens next and then not tell them because you know i think as a as a storyteller part of your job is to not take readers where they want to go. When the reader wants to know what happens next, you're like, ha ha, I'm telling you this instead, and that makes a good story. And I thought that was a really good way to do that. Thank you for listening. Please review our other available content for help writing, publishing, and marketing your book. If you have any questions about the Author Learning Center, please contact us by email at authorsupport at authorlearningcenter.com.